Hey guys, it's Kristen with Taz and Belly, and today I wanted to share a quick video demonstration of how I draw letters in my Bible. And I say draw because I do not have the greatest of handwriting. My husband gets on to me all the time for uh, how terrible it is and that he can't read it. Um, so it's funny to me, uh, and even more so to him, when I get compliments on how pretty my letters are. Uh, and it's only because I draw them, not so much write them. So I'm going to show you a couple different ways today um, just to make your handwriting look a lot better than it is. And I'm using an example Bible page uh, that I've done before that showed several different kinds of lettering. And so I'm sort of going to use those as a basic guide. Uh, but we may go over a couple different uh, styles that I use outside of these parameters as well. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to fake calligraphy. Um, a lot of times I use these sorts of lettering techniques and people always assume it's calligraphy or that I'm using some sort of fancy pen or brush and that's not the case. So the first thing I'm going to do is just loosely draw the word people uh, so you can see sort of how I structure the letters to begin with. And it doesn't have to be fast or complicated. Again, I'm not writing these letters so much as drawing them. And it doesn't have to be perfect the first time because this is just, I would just sort of drawing. go over them until I get a better you know, shape going on. I want the loops to be a little bit bigger. I want that L to be a lot taller. I'm gonna change the way the end of that E looks. So you can see I've got a lot of lines going on and we're not necessarily gonna be using all of those lines. So the first thing I'm going to do is just to go over the line drawing with a pigment liner. This is a 0.3, uh, which is my favorite size, especially to get started with letters. So I'm not going to go over every, every one of these lines, obviously, because I don't want to keep them all. I'm just going to get a basic idea for what I want the letter to look like. And even now, I'm not married to the shape that I have penciled in. So if it goes a little crazy or a little different... That's okay. Okay, so now that we have the basic shape of the letter, we can go back and sort of beef it up a little bit. And a good rule of thumb is to think about downstrokes and upstrokes. A lot of times people assume that you thicken up the left-hand side of the letter or the top or the bottom, um, and really that, that's not true at all. It, it depends on the way that you draw the letter. So you'll see a sort of go over it um, while I'm sort of thinking in my head how I would draw it. So this is an upstroke, so I don't do anything to it, but here would be a downstroke, and so I would fatten up that stroke a lot. And a lot of times I'll go over the entire letter while I'm doing this just to make sure I get a really good clean line. And so again, this is the upstroke, so I don't change anything about it, but here on the downstroke, I'm gonna make it a lot thicker. All right, so I'm just gonna go around and thicken up each of these letters. Okay, and so once I have that all laid out, then I would just sort of go back with this pen or a thicker one. Okay, so there's the word people. Probably not the best um, calligraphy I've ever done, uh, but it works for a demonstration. Another great thing that you can do to make your letters pop is to use a Prismacolor marker and add some shadows. And you're gonna need to think about the shadows very similarly to the way you thought about the upstrokes and downstrokes for the calligraphy. So let's assume that our light source is gonna be here in the upper right hand corner. And that would make highlights on the top of the letter and the right of the letter, which means shadows would be on the left of the letter and underneath. So we're gonna think about that as we draw our shadows. So we're gonna bring it on the left-hand side and we're gonna bring it underneath and the left-hand side on the inside of these loops. Um, another thing that you can do is to draw within a shape. So you can see that I did a shield here around the word Jesus. And so I'm just gonna take my pencil um, and draw a similar shape. 
doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't have to be exactly the way, you know, your inspiration piece looks. So we just get sort of a basic shape down with our pencil and then we're gonna go back with a pigment liner. And get the basic shape in. We can always go back and take that pencil line out in a little while. So I really like it when you fill in a shape with lettering. It changes the shape of the letter. If I were to write the word Jesus, obviously there wouldn't be this, um, you know, fluctuating baseline. But it looks really nice um, to draw your letters that way. It's much more interesting. So the S is in the middle. So I'm going to start with the S. And to begin with, I'm just going to draw just a little bit of a pencil shape like so, and then um, I'm gonna draw the other S, the way I know exactly how much room I have for the U, like so, same way over here, and we draw our J, and then our E. So if I need to fill in a little bit more of this room, I can make my S a little bit curvier like so so that looks really nice and now you'll see here this is sort of a bubble letter as opposed to just a line drawing to me the easiest way to make a bubble letter is to draw out your words first and then to trace around them with the pen so that's what I'm gonna do here I'm just gonna draw around the pencil lines that we made And just like before, you're not married to these pencil lines. So, you know, if your letters got too close to one another, kind of like my E and my S did here, when I actually go in with the pen and draw it, I can make some slight adjustments to the spacing. Which will sort of help with our overall layout. And you can see that I kind of goofed up on my S here a little bit but that's okay. Not everything is perfect. So everybody can draw bubble letters. There's nothing to it. So there we have the word Jesus. Um, and again, now we can take out these pencil lines if we want. We can fill that in with some color or add some, sh add some shading. couple other things we could do so let's add in these few lines may hate us because of um, and I like to make things um, fit into quirky places which is why I wrote people and Jesus first so we could do may hate us so I may just try to fit these in here at the top and we'll vary the size and the height these letters just so it all doesn't look the same and a lot of times I like to use wide letters especially for short words sort of let it fill in some space so we'll do people may hate us and so now we're gonna do because of uh, and you can see here again with the baseline it's just a varied baseline and I put the F the of in a circle just you know to be more interesting so we're gonna do something really similar to that and so this time I'm just gonna draw the letters I'm not gonna do anything um, creative with them yet so for letters like B's and P's and R's and E's where you have a center point of the letter and normally maybe for the letter E that the crossbar would be right in the center or the same for the B I like to either make the crossbar at the near the top or near the bottom um, just because I think it makes the letters more interesting the one thing I would say is to do it consistently so here we're gonna draw the E and instead of like putting it way down here, I would put it up here at the top where my, you know, similar to where the B is, um, just cause it looks a little bit more consistent. So I could make the C the same height, but I have some more room. So I think just to be quirky, I'm gonna make the C a little bit taller and put my A inside of the C. Um, just another way to try to make it interesting. And so I'm gonna use a short U, I think. and make my S a little taller. 
And I also like to vary capital letters with lowercase letters. I didn't so much do that here, but you can see I used a, a lowercase uh, u. The c and the s obviously could go either way. So I think I'm gonna do a lowercase e over here. All right, and so now we need to figure out where to put the of. Um, I probably should have left a little space for it. So let's take out our e and do the E at the top, maybe. And so we could either put the of in a circle. I don't know if I like it in a circle so much in this layout. I probably would just write the word of. So I'm just gonna do a little tiny cursive of, cause I think that's a nice spot. So we can do but and let's on either side. Um, and this is another one of those times when we can just vary the size and the shape of the letter. Um, another way to draw block letters if you're intimidated is just to make them um, and divide them up into rectangles until you get all the letters um, drawn. And then when you outline them with pen, you can ignore all the places that connect. We'll do never in calligraphy just because that's the way it's drawn in the Bible here. So we'll do the M. And the E, and the V, E. Sometimes I like to put a loop in my R's like I did here. Um, it works on either side depending on how you're drawing it, and sometimes I don't, so this time I didn't. Um, I'm gonna try to get a few more words on this line than before. Uh, another thing I like to do uh, similar here is just to write out the letters and then we're gonna add a little bit of detail. So. Let's do, um, I'm gonna do a different G. I'm gonna do an uppercase G. And I'm just gonna write the letters really simple. Okay, there's nothing really artistic about this yet. And I think this quote works just as well without the letter A here. Um, we can say never give them reason instead of never give, never give them a reason. And I think it will fit a little bit better. All right, so you can see I've um, varied it a little bit. All right, people may hate us because of Jesus, but let's never give them reason. And we're, again, we're going to spread this out a little bit. Two... And here's another one of those times when let's vary between uppercase and lowercase. So we're gonna go uppercase H, lowercase T, uppercase E, and I'm gonna go ahead and do an uppercase E, and I'm gonna put that crossbar away at the bottom. Um, and then Jesus, we're gonna wanna capitalize because Jesus, and we'll do an E, S, U, S. And for because, we're gonna do a lowercase B, uppercase E. I like to do a big C so we can do the A inside. U S E. So all we have left is of us and I'm going to kind of do the same treatment I used to do a reason which is sort of to stretch out a cursive and so um, I usually do a little bit of a leading edge so O and there's my F and then my U and my S. All right, and then maybe we'll do a cute little rectangle here to write Jen's name. All right, so let's go back in and add some detail. Another thing you can do to bubble letters to make them dimensional without using the shadow pen, or you can even use it um, in conjunction with the shadow pen, is to actually draw shadows. And you can again do that the same way. You need to think about where your light source is. And so we're always, I'm always going to drop my shadows to the left and down. So we're basically just going to mimic the shape of the letter.
that looks nice and clean. And at this point, I may would take um, the fine tip side of my Prismacolor marker and just go back in and add a few little quick shadows. Something else I like to draw a lot of is um, arrows, which are really easy. Just start with a line and then figure out how you want to do your tip. Sometimes I'll color them in like so. Um, so maybe we want to do a little bit of a feather here on this end, which is the way this particular arrow looked in my Bible. So we'll just kind of do an outline here and we'll do a few little dividers that I don't necessarily make the top and the bottom look the same because I think that can be more interesting. Um, something else I like to do to add a little bit of interest is just sort of put little cross marks on places. I do that a lot on flowers and um, you know, little containers that I might draw. Uh, I kind of like the way that looks. Another thing that you can do with arrows is they don't have to be uh, a straight line. So we can draw the tip here and we're just going to make this one a little bit more interesting. And we can make our line curly and make the end of it look like that. So we've got a, you know some different ways that you can draw um, things like that. And then you know I was talking about containers. So like I drew the, the word of you know in a circle. So we can make a circle. Sometimes I like to go around more than one time just because I think it looks kind of interesting. And then we would make our letters fit inside that container, maybe like that. Or um, similar to this one I did here, I may withdraw the container and then just give it some extra lines like so. And then maybe fill some of those lines in on the edges. Like that. Maybe I'll use that for a signature on something. Um, another thing you could do is to use a rounded rectangle to hold your words. Like that. Sometimes when I write the word love, I like to use the heart instead of an O, which is always fun. And probably if I was drawing these in my Bible, I would um, use a pencil and not just freehand these with a pen, but I'm just trying to give you a few little quick ways that you can make some marks. I like to make stems and um, poles and things striped. Um, a lot of times I'll just leave them like that or you can fill in your stripes. which looks pretty cool. Um, and again, you know, I like these little extra pieces and parts. Um, so I'm just gonna show you a couple other, you know, ways that you can make letters. Um, a lot of times I like to practice letters. So maybe I wanna draw the letter G. And so I'll do an uppercase G like that. Or I could do an uppercase G like that and add a little bit of weight and I could go back and fill that in or I could do an uppercase G like that um, and then with the lowercase G we could do that in so many ways we could do it sort of like a typewriter so we can draw two circles and then we can connect them here on this one side and we can give them a little flourish there on that side, so that's fun. Or if you just want to do a regular G, you can sort of vary the way you do the tail. 
which completely changes the way the letter looks. Also with a cursive G. You can change the way the letter looks like that. Um, and then I was talking earlier about letters with crossbars. So here's just your standard E, right? Okay, so maybe I like to make the E really wide and short and even just varying where you put the bar in the middle completely changes the way the E looks. Um, same thing if you're doing a tall E, you can put it way up at the top or way up at the bottom, depending on how you want your letter to work. And that works too with R's. R's are some of my favorite letter, one of my favorite letters. I like to do my R's with the big upper part and just a small lower part. I don't know, I think they look kind of fun and quirky. And then with a D, instead of just writing my D like this, which is how you would normally do it, a lot of times I make it fat at the top and thin at the bottom. Sort of like he's leaning over. Um, kind of like the way that, so that looks. We've done bubble letters, but we haven't done a cursive bubble letter, which is kind of fun. And so I would use a pencil for this. So I would write the word be still. I'm going to write it a little bit different than that one. Um, for a cursive Lowercase b is kind of hard for me. I kind of have to think about it. I always want to draw it like this, which sort of looks like an F. So I typically still do the loop and come down, but then go over. So maybe like that. Um, and then we're going to add our E. So B. And then for still, I'm going to do a cursive S as well. So I'm going to do an S like that. These are not my favorite letters, so let me just go ahead and tell you that um, were this happening in my Bible, I probably would play around with the letters a lot more. But, okay, so now we have them, and we're going to apply the same um, rules that we applied for our bubble letters earlier. We're just going to trace around the cursive form. I'm going to draw a really, really quick flower. A flower also seems to be sort of a popular thing that I draw that people like. Um, and so I may do um, a more in-depth flower drawing for you on video maybe next week or the week after. But for now, I'm just going to do kind of a, a quick little ditty just so you can kind of see me do this. Um, lettering. So draw this little bit of a flower, we'll do sort of a little something in the middle, maybe some little guys here in the background. So So if you are curious, yes, this is really how long it takes me to draw flowers. So granted, this one might be a little bit looser than the few that I've shown in the last couple days, but I like a contour drawing where you sort of don't even pick your pen up. So I just kind of go, you know, around the shape couple of times. I like to do lots of lines and then I may do some little stem situations. And again, none of this has to be super precise. So this one we're going to do a little bit different. All right, 
so there's some pretty basic flowers. I'm not going to do a lot of detail, but a lot of times where I have, you know, a petal flip up like that, I'll do some sort of hatching, cross hatching, or a little bit of a line situation just to give it some dimension. Obviously, this is really quick and rudimentary. I'll do a much nicer video of flowers for you another day. So let's assume we've got this whole background thing done and I want to write um, a little words in here. I like to sort of fit letters in nooks and crannies, which you know from the way I sort of filled in these letters here, but we can do the same thing with kind of a cursive writing. So I'm going to say bloom and I'll go ahead and tell you M's are the hardest letter to draw for me. I don't know what the deal is. So bloom Where we're going to do more, and I'm actually not going to do the word planted in cursive just because I want it to look a little bit different. And so maybe just take my marker for this one and just be do a really simple fat And then for planted, I'll switch over to the smaller side. Still pretty heavy tip. There you go. And go back and take out all these pencil marks. And at this point, you can add color, use colored pencils or watercolors or acrylics. Super cute. Um, so there you go. Um, not really a tutorial so much as a demonstration, but it just goes to show you that uh, you can draw your letters in all sorts of different ways. Um, you don't have to have any sort of you know, training or mad handwriting skills. It's really just about practice and, you know, getting used to drawing your letters instead of writing them.